close up to anatomy. Hi, fire. I'm Brandy with Cerulean. How you come doing? Come on, come on in. Okay. Well, I think you just found your lunch. Uh, well, well, you gonna eat there now? No, that's gonna. He has this. We can do 30 minutes if you like. No, no, no. Let's, let's do what we gotta do. This, okay. this, this could wait. Today he's going to do some intermittent hypoxic training and uh, so basically this machine simulates altitude. He's still receiving 100% oxygen but it's simulating as if he's doing a hike or a climb on a mountain um, going upwards of like 18,000 feet. So uh, it's going to be a 40 minute session really quick but his body is still receiving that benefit for VO2 max um, where his body is utilizing oxygen at the most efficient uh, level and um, best way for him to um, to really boost his performance and longevity. The wrestling room to the Olympic Training Center from where I stayed I was probably about 300 feet away. Maybe. That's where my life was every single day. I would wake up, go to, wake up, train, go to school in the morning, get out, get out, get out of school at noon. An hour and a half later, I'm training again. After that, I'm, 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 I'm doing other kind of, I would always do extra work. Like my day from from from, from 6 a.m. To, to about 10 o'clock was just, by the time I went to sleep, was just, was just giving away. You know? So the reason why I retired, because I retired from wrestling for three years. And I, and I was still strong. I was the youngest in history to ever win a gold medal in 08. But the reason why I retired from it because, my God, dude, I knew what it, I didn't want to go back to that. I didn't want to go back to complete isolation after tasting wine, after eating a hamburger. Like, I was so disciplined. Like, so disciplined. Like, it was ridiculous. Like, people thought it was crazy. You can ask Eric. Eric's like, man, I got, I got to go, go hit on some uh, high school girls. I'm like, I'm like, dude, I just, I just can't, man. I don't got time. I don't have money. I don't have anything. I just, I just, this is what I have. I would go to schools. I never had a jacket. Like, I was a poor Mexican kid that was brought to the Olympic training center that didn't have a dime in his pocket, but somehow was able to make it work. I would get picked up from school. I would run from, I would take a bike. I would ride it all the way to, to school, uphill. I would run back, and this is, I'm talking about like an eight, ten mile, like, bike ride or run, you know? These are, these are the things that I did, man, so, now I'm a bit spoiled. Now I kind of, for, you don't forget what you just get spoiled. Now I get pissed if I don't get direct flights. Now I don't get, now I get mad if it's not a, a business class or first class. You know, because partially for me, it's like, I feel like I've earned it. <laughs> you, you, you worked your way up. Yeah, so that's, I guess as a fighter, you grow a lot, but that's, that's one thing that I can tell you. It's like, it's, it's hard to go back to, you know, it's, it's hard to go back to complete isolation. And this is why science now has, has, has helped me has saved my career, has made it more exciting, has made it fun, where I'm not just day in, day out, like a freaking machine. There's an easier way. It's, it's, the, it's the anatomy of a fighter, and it's incorporated through science. I don't like, I don't like certain sides of me, you know? But, but I could always go back and look back, and I'm, I'm the type of person that will apologize. If I offended, if I offended the offended, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I don't, like there's, there's no ego to me because there's, there's more to life than, than just championships and just battles. There's, there's so much more to it. I think, I feel like I'm very wise for my age. I feel like I lived, I feel like I lived two lifespans. That's, like, that's kind of how I feel. Because I've, I've lived success at a very young age. I've sacrificed at a very young age. I was poor as a little kid. I was a, I'm an immigrant son. I've seen a lot of things as a, at a very, very early age. Where I would see my uncle get chased by immigration. You know, right in front of my eyes. And I already knew, I, I already knew what La Migra was with the immigration, the guys in, in green jumpsuits. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was, uh, it was like that, you know. So it's fun, man. It, it's what's made me see adversities, and now I'm just able to. I'm able to share that, you know. I'm not. I don't. I don't hold it in. They can call me cringy. They can call me a troll. But one thing's for sure: you're gonna watch me fight, and you're gonna listen to me. Just gonna hold you up. See, 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 y'all. This fighter's offering you food, man. They care sometimes. Sometimes. I'm gonna eat that. I'm on keto. Mmm. Oh, that must be like. Yeah, yeah, I'll call. Are you still in the at the Cerulean? Yeah, I'm on. Uh, I'm on Rain Tree. Rain Tree runs into Frank Lloyd Wright, right? Cause he he's he's off of Frank Lloyd Wright, right? Frank Lloyd Wright and Via Linda. Okay, I'm on Rain Tree, but Rain Tree turns into uh, it, tur it turns into. Uh... Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think it turns into Via Linda, but I'm not sure about Frank Lloyd. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a chance here. All right. All right, I'll see you over there. We'll, we'll, be, we'll, we'll be there in two minutes. I'm like gonna, I like your we're gonna add an extra 10 points to your blood pressure because Callie's doing it. Oh, here I am. I'll take <laughs> this like for you this first. Man, I know. So listen, I got a story. When Henry won the Olympic gold, my son was probably six or seven years old. And he, we were taking him to boxing gyms around the state. And I remember Henry got out of the Olympics and he... You know, had a real nice contract with Coke or Pepsi, was it? You know, and he could have been, you know, riding around, living the high life. And we go down to this hardcore boxing gym in South Phoenix. And there's Henry living in the gym a month after he won the Olympic gold medal to become the next Golden Glove Arizona State boxing champ. And he lived there in the gym and was training every day boxing. And I showed my son, I said, this is what you do when you win a gold medal. Okay, this is what you do, you keep training. And we, I mean, we never forgot that. It was the craziest thing, dude. He'd wake up, he could have lived anywhere, could have gone anywhere, and he's in the gym training a month after he got his gold medal. Even, 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 even I forget sometimes, yeah. but yeah, dude, I was eating, sleeping at the gym. Like literally rat infested. Rat infested gym, bro. It was, uh, but it's still hungry, dude. Like I still want to maintain myself in, in a kind of in a suffering, suffering kind of stage. Cause you don't want to get too, you don't want to get too spoiled, man. Then it's, uh, oh my God. Then I'll be worse than Killa Callie will be here. It's like, oh my God, it's too hot. I gotta go. Ooh, <laughs> so hot here. You know, there's Henry, man living in this place coming downstairs i remember living upstairs in that little that little room up there coming down working out it's crazy man yeah that's a champion dude who else does that nobody nobody yeah and you won golden gloves that year i mean i don't see i don't I, you, you won arizona golden gloves crushed it Right? Taking names, baby. Taking names, taking numbers. Now we're now Marlon Marais is is next. <laughs> I want his, I want his head on a spike, Doc. You got it. I want some, I want to, I want some Brazilian cuisine, <laughs> June 8th. No offense, Bruno. <laughs> Bruno just a little appetizer, bro. It's a snack. You're gonna have the main meal on that uh, the main course coming up. Bruno, right. the traitor. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
You missed all the stories. Anatomy of Dr. Hyde right here. El Capitan. You see that one minute. What's up, man? One minute. What's that? Did you see the one minute long? Yeah. Patricio Pitbull. Yeah, one minute. 32 seconds, yep, one yep. minute. What's up, How you doing? How you doing? Good. Good. Well, this is... Oh, who is back, my you. man! <laughs> What's up, brother? How you doing, man? Good to see you back, man. Yeah. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? This is called My Father, limited edition 10th anniversary, because you did a great job in getting Brock into... Man, thank you, brother. Into, I really all, appreciate all the fighters, it. And this is for... Crimson Tide. Oh my, I thought of oh my God, that's so cool, man. That's from Team Cejudo. Wow. You know, this and is Team my, Pitbull. Yeah, Ooh. this is my favorite gift. Thank you so much, man. Thank that's you awesome, for all this, this. Thank you, thank you. He makes a difference. He saved some of the, our fighters' lives a couple of times, literally. Thank literally you. saved he's, their lives. He's still saving my life. <laughs> he's still saving my life. my best client ever <laughs> since I opened my office. <laughs> this guy's got more cuts on him <laughs> than, uh, <laughs> than Lars Fishburne in John Wick 3. Rafael's not far behind right now. What are you doing? What's up, yeah! He's awesome. Is too happy? Damn, he's heavy. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thank you. Such a big deal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Hey! That's the man. You almost achieved the impossible. For sure, for sure. Great to see you. Anything's possible. Congrats, man. Really nice. Yeah. Most yeah. awesome. The most the most the most yes, sir, cool. yes, sir. Yes, sir. And we got you covered right here with the anatomy of a fighter. This is gonna. This is about to go viral. What words you got for him, Ken? Wow. You know what? I remember the first day I met Brock, <laughs> and I think it was at Fight Ready, and it was during a pro practice, and he was like in eighth grade. Yep. And. It, he started, they are like, all right, he's going to spar with the pro team. I was like, what the? It's like, you got this kid sparring with the pro team? Like, are you crazy? And he went out there and he started fighting. I was like, who is this kid? And I was impressed. I was like, who's this kid sparring with grown adults? And he was like 13 or 14 at the time. So Back in the day. Back in the day, I already knew you were going to be special. So this guy achieved the impossible. It's, it's extremely hard. Almost impossible to get accepted into Harvard. When when you when you prove people wrong, is they become your fans, dude. For sure. They become your fans. You're like, damn, dude, I thought this kid was gonna be different. I thought this kid wasn't gonna make it. I thought this kid was just gonna be another fucking, uh, you know, football player, just yeah. average. Yeah. But this is this is where you gotta make it up. This is this is what drives you, man. Is is, is success, man. Is achieving what you can achieve now. Physically, sure. emotionally, and you have it in you, dude. Thank you. Thank you. So Brock, what you share about all the support uh, from these Brock. guys? I mean, these guys are awesome. I mean, thank you, Henry. Thank you, every Captain's a man. I mean, it's just such a blessing to be able to sit here and be able to say this stuff right now. It's awesome. I mean, go Crimson. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> hey, gotta show Harvard this, dude. Yeah, for sure. Hey, show Harvard this. Hey, Doc, but something, I mean, uh, Brock, something that I didn't want to talk to you about, and I don't want you. This is this is a moment where you should celebrate, dude. Yeah. I've been in your position before, where I've ha I've had fucking every school in the country trying to recruit, yeah. and you have to say no to people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's normal, dude. Even this is what these people do. They befriend you in order for you to go to their school, dude. But you can you, you can only choose one. I feel like you made the right decision. Yeah. So don't hang your head on that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is this is this is this is the game called life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think you made the. Fun. There's no more. There's not a. There's not a more prestigious school in the world, dude, than Harvard. There isn't, dude. It's not Yale. It's not Princeton. You're at the school, man. So you made a right decision, man. Have fun. And if they don't like you, then, then so be it. Yeah. That's life. Fuck. Sure.